little bit of smoke. How much smoke? A little bit. Like how much smoke? Uh, like a quart of oil. Holy cow, man. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, let's do this. Hey guys, what's going on? Here's my car. Uh, we got a front mount intercooler set up on it now. And because of that, we've noticed that our coolant temperatures are a little bit higher, especially sitting in traffic. But we've noticed that it takes a while for the coolant temps to come back down once we start moving. So we decided we ordered a, uh, uh, a JBR Raiders Air Dam, which is a big piece of plastic that covers this to force the air down into the radiator. And we're also gonna be making some custom uh, ducting that sits on the sides here above the piping of the intercooler to direct the airflow into the center. Because right now the airflow can go here and then it goes around the sides. And right now the airflow can go here and it goes above the top here. So hopefully this will fix the uh, high coolant temps and uh, let's get started. Okay guys, so this is what we're gonna use right here. This is the uh, JBR Raiders Air Dam. It's a very nice piece, very flexible. I can't remember the material it's made of. I think it's polyurethane. Is that what they say it's called? Yeah, oh. I think it's polyurethane. Then we went on Amazon and we bought some of this. It's kind of like uh, edge trim. Um, and it's gonna be perfect for uh, the sheet metal here that we're gonna trace the patterns out for the ducting on the sides of the radiator support. Uh, you could use snips, but this sheet metal is a little bit thicker. What'd you say the thickness was on this? 22 gauge. 22 gauge sheet metal. So it's pretty thick, it's kind of hard to flex. So it should hold up to wind. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and use the bandsaw to cut that. But first we have to remove the bumper and we have to figure out the pattern. We're gonna trace a pattern out for the ducting on the sides of the intercooler. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, jack up the car, set it on jack stands just to make it easier to get to some of the fasteners holding the bumper cover in place. So we got the bumper off now. If you guys want to know how to remove the bumper, we have a video of the front mount intercooler install and you can see that there. So the next step right now is basically to trace out uh, custom ducting with some cardboard along the sides here, on each side. But we wanna make sure we have clearance with the bumper as well as all the components that are in that area. So it's gonna take a little bit of trial and error of the bumper fitting on and stuff like that, but we'll slowly be able to get it done. All right, so after some time and uh, patience, we managed to trace out each of the sides for the ducting on the sides of the intercooler there. We just used some thin, very thin paper type cardboard and uh, some staples and stuff like that. And we just basically have everything laid out so that it's gonna be on this side of the intercooler and on the other side of the intercooler. So what we got so far, this is gonna be from the right side here. This is going to sit um, like this. In behind the piping here. And it's going to be sitting something like that. And I purpose, purposely left a little bit of a gap here around the couplers as well as along the edges so we can install the edge trim. The edge trim is to prevent the sheet metal from cutting into the couplers and from hitting any metal and rattling around and whatnot. So in order to mount this on, we gotta cut it to size, obviously with the sheet metal. And then there's this little bolt here where the radiator ducting used to go. Actually, that might've been the power steering, where the power steering line, cooler lines used to go. We're gonna put the bolt in there and attach it to the sheet metal using a bracket of some kind. Same thing as on the other side. For the other side, this is the shape of it that we finally got out. It's a little bit smaller, but it's going to sit like so in here, it's gonna sit slightly behind the, the uh, power steering cooling lines, and we're gonna bolt it in to that hole right there on the radiator support. So now that we got our shapes cut out, we're gonna uh, trace them out into the sheet metal and use the bandsaw to cut the sheet metal to shape. Okay guys, so we got our shapes traced out, and to conserve metal, if we mess up, we're gonna keep them as close as we can because then we still have all of this if we mess up on these. So I'm gonna use a black permanent marker and just slowly trace this out. And this is a, a shape we can always modify the shape later. Alive.
So we've got our cuts made, as you can see. This is for the right side, right front. That's for the left front. And uh, we had to do a little trimming here and there just to make sure everything had clearance for the edge trim. And now Julian is just uh, filing down the edges there to keep everything smooth. And we're thinking we're gonna put a coat of uh, caliper paint, a black coat of caliper paint on here, just to uh, make sure it's kinda stealthy and you can't even see it. So we layered up two layers of that same sheet metal, and this is gonna be for strength. It's the bracket that's going to mount the sheet metal ducting to the radiator support. Ah! That's sharp, man. That's sharp. So tell us what we got going on, Joanne. Okay, so we set up the machine, and we did a test just to see how strong the welds are. And uh, you can see we got some good heat coming through, almost went through the metal, but I think we're okay, cause. The metal breaks, not the welds. And that's exactly what we want. What we want is the welds to be stronger. Yeah, we're good. That's that's not gonna come off. So it looks like to make the brackets, we're gonna be doing this method. We're just but gonna we're gonna do a series of tacks right around the uh, mounting point. So we decided to keep the brackets pretty wide so we get a nice surface area because we're gonna mount it behind the ducting itself and then bolt it into the radiator support. The wider the bracket is, the more surface area the welds have. So this should be able to handle higher speeds. It's gonna be something like this. I'm gonna go from behind and then weld behind here so this acts as a support. And so it looks better too because you won't be able to see the welds on the back side. And it'll just go like this. And then we'll bolt it in right there. Something like that. And because this car is basically apart every other month for more mods, you we can it. just check on it to make sure things are okay. So the first, the next step now is to um, weld this on right about here. Perfect. Let's uh, let's go clamp that and uh, weld, weld it. it. Oh! What happened? <laughs> All the darkening was off. I blinded myself. <laughs> We're good. So clean, clean. Oh yeah. All right. Okay, so the next step is to drill the mounting hole. Made a little mark right there. Kind of held it up to the car. Figured out where I need to put the hole, roughly. I'm gonna make the hole, make a pilot hole here with the small drill bit first. Now we're gonna use this step drill bit and uh, we're gonna go one step at a time because this is the bolt that we took off the radiator for the ducting, the OEM ducting, and we're gonna reuse this bolt to mount these on. Wow, that's a good bit. And the bolt fits right through perfectly. Now we're gonna go up to the car and bolt it on. Well, we're gonna paint it first. Well, sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna paint it first, <laughs> we're gonna prep it, and then we're gonna paint it. So now let's do the one on the right side. So now let's go get these prepped and get them painted. We're gonna wash them with some acetone and then give them a layer of paint. You look like you know what you're doing. I don't. I just watch a lot of YouTube. Okay, so we don't have any other black spray paint except for this caliper paint. And I never ended up painting my calipers, so we're just gonna use this. All right guys, so we got them painted now. This should protect it from rust to some degree. We're gonna put the edge trim around here to protect any components in the vicinity of this. And then we're gonna install the Raider air dam that goes up top here after we install the bumper. Okay, so now we're putting the edge trim on. Just goes on nice and easy. Oh, nice. Now, this is where a heat gun might come into play to help it mold on. 
but I don't really think I'm having an issue right now. Maybe for this curvy section, I might use the heat gun, but it seems like it's going on quite easily. That looks, that looks good. Oh, man. this is good. That actually looks really so good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it right here because we can't really go past the bracket. I have some of this uh, E6000 sealant that we used for my methanol injection kit and stuff, and that might actually help keep things from falling off. This, this, this curve, honestly, it's just to protect the uh, the boost tube. That's all it is. That's, that's the main reason. Just protect the boost tube and whatnot. It's gonna be under the car. It's not for aesthetics. Like it's just, it's gotta just guide air through the radiator, not let it deflect through the sides. You don't need to cool your fog lights. I'm just gonna put a little bit of sealant. And we're just gonna do this all the way around. Oh yeah. That won't come off now. That sealant should hold it in place nicely, especially when we're on the highway and there's like a lot of wind. All right, so we have the left side, driver's side of the car, ready to install. When we were cutting this, the, uh, the shapes out, we purposely left some space between all the components around it because we knew the edge trim was gonna fill it in. Now we're gonna get the 10 mil, tighten it up. It's really working. Look at that. That'll help. That'll help. And it's pretty solid too. It's not like it's gonna go anywhere. And the edge trim really seals off the edges. And the edge trim is gonna protect the silicone hoses from being cut. Well, the edge trim is really gonna protect the silicone hoses. And that performs pretty well in terms of seating. Of course, air can kind of make its way, but it's gonna deflect most of the air, which is going to help direct air directly across the intercooler and radiator instead of letting it bleed out. And we're almost done here. Doing the last passenger side. Okay, we got the size now. We're gonna put some sealant on it. I don't need too much. All in the name of airflow. And here is the passenger side. I'm gonna take this bolt out right here. We're gonna use this bolt to mount this side in. And that is the bracket that came with the front mount intercooler kit, right? Yeah, the JBR front mount intercooler bracket kit. It's to hold the power steering lines in front of the intercooler. Okay. It do the job. Does that look good? Is that clearing all around? That looks really yeah, good, Yeah, that's man. clearing all around. We're good, guys. It's all done. Just gotta put everything back together now. It's making a good seal. That's gonna and force the all air the air. is gonna go this way instead of that way. Okay, we're gonna put the bumper back on. So we got our little plates there on the side. Looks pretty good. You won't even be able to tell that they're there once we put the bumper I on. I can't even see them now because of the sun's glare. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's pop this out. Plug the fog lights in. Ambient air sensor. Ambient air sensor has been relocated. Oh, you relocated now, it. So we don't have nice. to unplug that anymore, which is kind of nice. Cool. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Make sure the fog lights are properly twisted into their cavities because sometimes when you let the bumper hang, it untwists the fog bulbs. Fog bulbs. Fog bulbs. Fog like bulbs. It's funny. Maybe you want to guide that side a little. I could, but uh, I don't want to. Don't hit it. Let me do this stuff. That's uh, that's panel alignment for Mazda's, right? The, uh, yeah, it's pretty out of out of alignment. Three quarter inch gap. Okay. Looks good. Yeah, it does look good. It's a nice that. car. I like it. Oh yeah. Doesn't even. It's kind of hitting the. Uh... You know what? Let's take this back off. Uh, just gonna trim this a little bit. This area. Oh, okay, so now we're gonna put the Raiders Air Dam on. So basically, it's just like this, okay? You reuse the screw that goes here and here, and they provide you with four push clips. One is gonna go here, 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 and one is gonna go here. In other words, he thinks so, they're gonna go in the yeah, holes that they provide. I read the instructions briefly, I read the instructions briefly, and uh, hopefully I'm correct. There you go. So I push the center in, heard a click, and then this pops out. I'm gonna keep this in my change box in front of the cup holder as many of us Mazda Speed 3 enthusiasts do. When we don't know what to do with something, we just put it in the change compartment. Air dam is going to go like this. Now, they, since these holes here are ovalized, JBR instructions recommend that you put them perpendicular to the ovalization, meaning the clip itself, when you push this thing down, this little centerpiece down, this expands outwards. So you want it to expand outwards, not like this, but like this, because it's ovalized. Basically, if it expands like this, there's less meat to grab onto because it's already an oval in this position. But if it expands like this, 
is gonna catch more plastic on the ends here. It's in the instructions anyways. There you go. But we decided to let you guys know. Decided right? to waste some time explaining it. Cool, man. All right, let me put I the like other it. one down. It's a, it's a nice little hat for your Mazda. See, he's wearing a little hat now. Oh, this is... See, look, he's smiling, he's a little happy. doesn't really... Actually, that's his nose, right? That's actually. the smile. I don't know, the Gen 1s don't have much oh, of a smile. Actually, one of the clips is, is slightly smaller. And yeah, that might go down that there. That goes down here. In the smallest hole. Yes. In the entire thing. Oh, okay. All right. We're firing in all cylinders now. Actually, I think we were supposed to put the screws in first. <laughs> okay. All right, so right now what we have here is a human being fastening a piece of polymer onto its hunk of metal with an internal combustion engine. Using explosions to propel you forward, this vehicle takes you across larger distances than walking. That looks pretty good. That's gonna force the air down into the radiator. And the intercooler, hopefully. Raiders Air Dam, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Well, you know, if, uh, if it works, and it should, because based on the reviews that I've read on the Mazda Speed forums, this does help, so, uh, Hope you like my eyebrows, I shaved them.